The application I'm going to be making in this video will be for iOS using Xamarin and C Sharp. This is meant to demonstrate how Xamarin iOS is a C Sharp binding to the native iOS APIs and how the .NET framework is weaved in. The application is a sort of flashcard application, although I'm going to use it for practicing translating colors from English to Spanish. So let's take a look at the finished application. So here the application has a list of English words for colors, red, white, blue, and green. If I click on one of the rows in the table view, a segue is triggered that displays the Spanish translation. And since this is within a navigation controller, I get the back button in the navigation bar for free. Then if I click this plus button here, it's going to display a pop-up asking for an English word in its Spanish translation. So let's get started building this. Here in Xamarin Studio, I'm going to create a new solution. So I want an iOS application, and it's going to be a single view app. I'll leave the default language of C Sharp, and then I'll click Next. Now for the app name, I'm going to call it Spanish Translator. And I'm going to uncheck the iPad choice just for simplicity. Now there is no reason why this wouldn't work on the iPad, and in fact the iPad might enable features that the phone couldn't support because of the size. However, the differences are all in the user interface, and I'm just going to create an iPhone application for now and focus on creating the app. So clicking Next here is going to show the last window in the setup, and I'm going to leave all of these options as their defaults, so I'll just click Create. Now if you're not familiar with iOS development, here is the 90 second or less crash course. It's all based upon the model view controller design pattern, but the terms are used a little bit differently. So for example, all of the views are contained in one file, which is this storyboard. The storyboard lets us see all of the views in the application, but it also allows us to define the relationships between them using something called segues. And all of this is done without writing any code. Now where most of the code is, is in the controller, or as iOS calls it, the view controller. Now there are many types of view controllers, and in this app we're actually going to have three of them. Uh, finally is the model, which is not created in the project by default, but that could be anything. And in this case it's going to be a dictionary from the collections.generic namespace. I want to start this app from scratch, so I'm actually going to delete the contents of the default storyboard, although not the actual storyboard itself. This is easy to do. We're just going to open up the main storyboard, and it may take a little time to open the first time. Once it's open, what we're going to do is we're going to right is going to click on this bar down here at the bottom and press delete. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on view controller CS and click remove. I can click the delete button here in the pop-up because I'm not going to be needing this file anymore. Now we'll start building the app. Now there are going to be two views that we are switching between. To make this easier, we're going to contain these within a third view, which will be a navigation view. Now we're never going to have to design this navigation specifically. It's just going to insert some navigation user interface above each of the content views. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag a navigation controller from the toolbox onto the storyboard. Now several things have happened here. First, the navigation controller brings with it a plain old view controller. And this is going to be the root view for the navigation controller, which is the view controller that will be shown first. Now this root relationship is shown by this segue here between the two controllers. Also, since the storyboard was empty when we added the navigation view controller, it was marked as the initial view controller. Now the view controller added as the root of the navigation controller is empty, and it needs to contain a table view to show a list of the English words. 
I could drag a table view control from the toolbox onto the view controller, but since this is something that is so common, iOS has a special view controller, a table view controller, that already has a table view and also wires up some stuff for us. I'd rather use one of those, so I'm going to delete the root view controller, but not the navigation controller, by clicking on the bottom bar and pressing delete. Notice that the segue disappears as well, but that's okay. We'll create it, re recreate it in a minute. Now in the toolbox, I'm going to find a table view controller and drag one of those to the storyboard. I want this to be the root view controller for the navigation controller. So to create that root segue, I'm going to control drag from the navigation controller to the table view controller. Then when I release the button, there's going to be a pop-up, and in there, under Relationship, select Root. Now we need to create a view controller class for the table view controller in the storyboard. So I'm going to click on the project in the solution panel, and I'm going to press Command N to get the new file dialog. I'm going to select the general category and the empty file template, or empty class template rather, and this new class is going to be called English English View Controller because it will show a list of English words. And then I'll just create, click New to create the new file. Now, the new file is going to open up in the text editor, and as you can see, it's very minimal. So some changes are going to be need to be made before it can be hooked up to the storyboard. First, the view in the storyboard is for a table view controller. So this class must be as well. To do that, we're going to derive this English view controller from a UI table view controller, which is the base class for a table view controller. Now, UI table view controller is part of UI kit, so I need to import or rather using the UI kit namespace. Then I can derive this from UI table view controller. As I've said several times, we're going to associate this class with the table view controller that's in the storyboard. However, for the storyboard to recognize the class, we have to add some metadata in the form of attributes. Now the attribute in question is the register attribute and it's part of the foundation namespace. So first I need to bring in the foundation namespace. And then what I can do is I can put the register attribute on the class. Now register takes a parameter which is the name of the class as a string. Next, we're going to need to add a special constructor and this constructor takes a single parameter of int ptr and then also calls the base class constructor with that same parameter and the body can be empty. Now this constructor is required for a view controller that is associated with a storyboard. So now I'm going to go back to the storyboard and enlarge this a little bit. And now clicking on the bar here at the bottom of the table view is going to reveal a couple of icons here in the left. Now if you hover over the first one, it's going to say table view controller. So this is the icon that represents the view controller class. Now if we click on it and then look over here in the properties panel, there is a drop down for this class property here. And if we open up the, the drop down, we'll see the English view controller that was created earlier. And the register prop in the register attribute that we put on the English view controller class is what makes it show up over here. Now to prove that we've got this all hooked up together, we're gonna need to, we're gonna write a small piece of code before testing it for the first time. 
So notice that at the top of the table view controller is a navigation bar and there's a title in the navigation bar. Right now it just says title but we can change that in code. So I'm going to go back to the English view controller class and I'm going to add an override for a method called view did load. Now as the name suggests this is part of the view controller lifecycle and it's going to be called after the view has been loaded into the application. After the call to the method in the base class we can add this line of code navigation item dot title equals English. This will set the navigation bar title to English so that we can be sure that we connected things the right way. And with that it's time to test the app. So I can select a simulator over here to run it in but the default of iPhone 6s will be fine. If I had a device plugged in I could easily test it there as well but I'll go ahead and press the run button or I can press command enter to build and deploy the application to the simulator. And sure enough the title is English. So we got that much working. Next time we'll set up a data source for the table view.